Hello everyone, this is Maverick Pond, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2021 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, paper 1, question 26. Now question 26, when a standard copper electrode is joined to a standard hydrogen electrode, the E cell is positive 0.34 volt. So which change to the cell conditions leads to a higher cell potential? We have four options. Option A, decreasing pressure of the hydrogen gas of the hydrogen electrode. Option B, increasing the hydrogen ion concentration of the hydrogen electrode. Option C, using one mole per dm cube copper 2 nitrate solution instead of copper 2 sulfate solution. Option D, using one mole per dm cube ethanoic acid instead of hydrochloric acid in the hydrogen electrode. Obviously, the topic tested in this question will be electrochemistry. And let us consider what happens when you have a standard copper electrode joined to a standard hydrogen electrode and why is the E cell plus 0.34 volt. Actually this electrochemical cell is pretty straightforward because we have standard hydrogen electrode and the E value for my standard hydrogen electrode is 0.00 volt. So the standard E value for copper electrode is a plus 0.34 volt. We can refer to the data booklet involving this but it's actually Pretty simple, since your standard hydrogen electrode E value is zero, then we know that the E value for your standard copper electrode will be a positive 0.34 volt. Now, for an overall electrochemical cell, I know that calculating the E cell, we'll just be using this formula, E reduction minus E oxidation, and your reduction will be for my copper electrode, because when you attach these two half cells together, the one with a more positive E naught value will be undergoing reduction, the one with a less positive inner value will be undergoing oxidation. So we know that the copper electrode will be the species that undergoes reduction. Hydrogen electrode will be the one that undergoes oxidation. So E cell equals to E reduction minus E oxidation. The reduction is for copper electrode. Oxidation is for hydrogen electrode. And if the question wants us to consider what is the change that will lead to a higher cell potential. So what will cause the E cell to increase? Now, in order for me to increase the E cell, it's actually fairly simple. I can either increase our E reduction, that means somehow I increase the E value for my copper electrode, or I decrease the E oxidation, somehow I decrease the E value for your hydrogen electrode. So either one of these changes, either an increase in the E value for my copper 2 plus and copper electrode, or my copper 2 plus and copper half cell, or I decrease the E value for H plus and H2 electrode or my standard hydrogen electrode. Either one of these changes will cause the E cell to increase. So this is what we want to look out for. Let us just run through the options and see which one of them will give me one of these outcome. Now option A, decreasing pressure of the hydrogen gas of your hydrogen electrode. So we have to look at the half equation involving our hydrogen electrode, which is here, 2H plus plus 2 electron to give me H2. You can refer to the data booklet involving this half equation. Now, if you decrease the pressure for your hydrogen gas, the partial pressure for your hydrogen gas decreases, and actually this will favor the position of the equilibrium to shift towards the right-hand side. And once the position of equilibrium shifts towards the right-hand side, you will favor reduction. Remember, this half equation is always written in reduction form. If the forward reaction is favored, effectively, this means that I'm favoring reduction. And when I favor reduction, E value, which is a measure of the likelihood of reduction, will increase. All right, so when the position of the equilibrium shifts towards the right, E value for a hydrogen half cell increases or my E oxidation increases. Now, if you try to sub back to your E cell, what happens if you have a bigger E oxidation? If you have a bigger E oxidation, since your E cell is E reduction minus E oxidation, if you have a bigger E oxidation, your E cell actually will decrease. So this means that A would not give me an increase in the E cell. In fact, it is the other way around. It will cause the E cell to drop. So A would not be the answer. How about B? Let us consider B, increasing the hydrogen ion concentration of your hydrogen electrode. So we are looking at the same half cell here, involving 2H plus plus 2 electron to give me H2. If I increase concentration for H plus, then the concentration for the reactant increases. The system will try to remove the excess H plus. Position of the equilibrium will shift 
towards the right hand side, you notice the conclusion will be essentially the same as what we have here for A. PoE shifts towards the right hand side, then favors the fall reaction, which is favoring reduction. This means that the E value increases or your E oxidation increases. So when you have a bigger E oxidation, this will cause the E cell to decrease. And therefore, this would mean that option B is also not the correct answer. Next, how about C? C using one more per dm cube copper 2 nitrate solution instead of copper 2 sulfate solution. Now, one more per dm cube copper sulfate will correspond to one more per dm cube copper 2 plus aqueous. Since copper sulfate is fully soluble, this will give me one more per dm cube copper 2 plus aqueous in solution. If I consider one more per dm cube copper nitrate, it will also give me the same concentration of copper 2 plus. The concentration for copper 2 plus aqueous will also be one more per dm cube since nitrates are soluble. So concentration for copper 2 plus in copper sulfate and in copper nitrate essentially is the same. These two guys will be under standard condition. Standard condition concentration of ions in solution is supposed to be one mole per dm cube. So since there's no difference in the copper concentration, then there wouldn't be any change in the position of the equilibrium for your copper half cell. There's no change in the E value for your copper half cell. And it also means that there will not be any change in the E cell. So C, there's no change, and therefore C also is the wrong answer. Now, finally, if I consider D, now what happens in D is, what if I use one mole per dm cube ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid, instead of hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, in the hydrogen electrode. Now, since HCl is strong, it is fully dissociated, so one mole per dm cube HCl will give me one mole per dm cube H+ ion concentration. So this is under standard condition. Huh? This is one more per dm cube. Now if I have ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid, and it is partially dissociated, one more per dm cube ethanoic acid will give me a concentration of H plus that is less than one more per dm cube. Because it is partially dissociated, only a little bit of your weak acid will dissociate, and the concentration for H plus that I will have will be less than one mole per dm cube. So this is equivalent to decreasing the concentration for H plus in the solution. It's no longer one mole per dm cube, it is less than that. So if I link it back to my half equation, I am decreasing the concentration for your H plus, and the system doesn't like this decrease in the concentration for H plus. So what you will do is position of equilibrium will shift towards the left hand side, try to top up the H plus concentration. So once PoE shifts towards the left, this means that reduction, which is a fall reaction, is less likely to occur and the E value will drop. So remember E value measures the tendency for the fall reaction, measures the tendency for reduction. PoE shifts towards the right hand side, favor reduction E value goes up. PoE shifts left, favor the reverse reaction, it will disfavor reduction and the E value will drop. So this E oxidation decreases. And if I sub back to your E cell, E cell equals to E reduction minus E oxidation. When you have a smaller E oxidation, this will mean that your E cell will increase. So this is the one that we are looking out for because this will cause the cell potential to be greater. So therefore, option D will be the answer here. So finally, if I consider which change to the cell conditions leads to a higher cell potential, so the answer to this question will be option D. Alright, so that was the discussion involving this question. And if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.